Now, from Washington, D.C., and the headquarters of the National Geographic Society, this is National Geographic This Week. He saw a frontier and set out to conquer it. And to do that, Phil Newton designed and built machines that allowed people to do things no one had ever done before. Deep water diving suits, submarines, and mini submarines. There's some, something so incredibly gratifying when the water closes over your head, you know, you sort of go, yeah, I'm still alive, it worked. You know, everything that I just built worked. Newton is an inventor, adventurer, and pioneer devoted to deep water diving. For more than 40 years, Newton has called the sea his second home. So when I was um, about 15 years old, I opened the first dive shop in Western Canada. And I ran it uh, after school, in high school, and I ran it on the weekends. I eventually sold the shop when I was about 16, went back to school, and uh, after high school, I, I went into commercial diving. That was the beginning of his deep sea adventure. By the time he was at ease with so-called hard hat diving, Newton was reaching depths of 600 to 700 feet. In 1968, uh, myself and a, a team of divers made the first ocean commercial 600-foot dives. 600-foot dives today are routine. That routine comes with major risks. So I had the bend seven times in a two-week period during the experimental dives. Uh, I wound up from the experimental diving uh, having vestibular bends in the inner ear. That's what these big hearing aids are from. Um, and so I very quickly determined that's not the way to go underwater. Newton's vision of the future already exists on film, a time when people live in one atmosphere colonies on the ocean floor, where men and women work outside in suits like the exosuit and get around in subs like deep worker. I see a time, uh, at least in my mind's eye, where uh, there will be one atmosphere colonies at the bottom of the ocean, probably powered by the heat vents. And um, the, you know, the, you'll live at one atmosphere, but you'll work outside in suits like newt suits. You'll travel to and from using submarines like deep workers. And I hope that I'm involved uh, you know, until I'm too old to, to climb into a sub. But if I'm not, somebody else will. We're going to go there, just like we're going to go to the stars. I think we're fortunate to be in the sort of generation that's the first ones to see this planet from space and to understand that this planet should not have been called Earth. It should have been called water because it truly is a water planet. And I kind of, in my poetic moments, I like to think of myself as, as forging passports to allow us to, to visit the three quarters of this planet that we were denied access to by birth. And so that's what building this equipment is all about. And that's what understanding the undersea world is all about. Is the, I, I really believe that we're the early explorers, the first wave that we're moving into this part of our planet. Phil Newton envisions devices that will help him construct a self-sustaining station deep under the sea. I uh, am very interested in been doing a lot of sketches and a lot of thinking about an undersea colony operating at one atmosphere in deep water. By deep, I mean uh, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 feet. And I have in my mind something very much like the sketches of the Mars colony, but taking place at a couple of thousand feet and centered around, clustered around the heat vents. Leave your colony to go to work, mining the heat vents for their minerals. Um, wearing something like this, an advanced version, and driving something like the Deep Worker. So a very grandiose, ambitious scheme, yes, doable, absolutely, absolutely doable. And it's going to be done. If not me, someone's going to do it. 